Stitch and Seam. Hello. It's been a while since we recorded in person as humans. I think we say that almost every time, too. I know. It just it feels like a while because like sometimes we'll record several, like on conventions and stuff, we'll record yeah. several episodes at a weekend and then like just like have a break or like passes. relaxing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but I mean, it's. I've been I've been thinking a lot about New Year's resolutions and things and yeah. trying to keep the goals that I've made since we're only into February. Yeah, has it been going pretty good? Um y- yes ish. Um I got knocked out with the flu. Like Aww. you can tell my voice is still a little bit strained and by the end of the podcast I might be talking like this. Um <laughs> I got like an upper respiratory infection and it's gone on for over a month and my other job is a call center so I'm kind of talking myself hoarse and it's healing slowly slowly so I have cop drops them. here yeah take good care of them uh, vo- vocal cords yeah, oh, yeah it's not oh, like yeah. you run a podcast or I know. anything <laughs> <laughs> I was like everything I do is talking like literally everything <laughs> All right, should we do some quick housekeeping? Yes. Okay. So, if you have uh, cosplay horror stories or happy stories, you can share them with us by going to the website at cosplaystitchandseam.com. Or or at our email, cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com. Or you can check out our Facebook group. Uh, it's just Cosplay Stitch and Seam. There's a fan page and a group. Um, you do have to request permission to join the group, but we approve them pretty quickly. And all yeah. of our members are awesome. And there's a lo- always a lot of fun threads. And people are very supportive. And I love our community. It's been super great. We've had some people start offering uh, like sewing lessons. Yeah. To uh, just anybody asking questions about... Like, hey, how can I make this thing? And then just like a bunch of very helpful, very constructive people jump on there. And they're like, here, check these things out. And it's just like, it's incredible. It's yeah, so nice. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad because I don't always see every post. So if you need to tag one of us, like, it's okay. Like, please oh, tag yes. us. Um, I, I want to make sure, like, especially if you have like a direct question or an idea for an episode or just like something you want to chat about, like, please feel free to tag us in there. Um yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Upcoming conventions. Uh, so I have backed out of Level Up, Aww. and I think this episode would be airing on that day, I oh, think. Oh, okay. I don't know. Uh, but if it's afterwards, I wasn't able to actually go to Level Up. Turns out my finances said, you can do this or groceries. And I was like, I kind of want to feed my husband. And you made the good adult decision, though. It was a hard one. Yeah. Because I've tried to go to level up for now two years in a row and have missed out because finances. Third, third time's the charm. Third, third time's, time's the charm, charm, yes. I'm going to go next year and I'm yes. going to just blow it out of the water. There it's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I I really want to give that co- that convention a shot. It just sounds like so much fun and yeah. it's video games. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, later this month, probably close to when this episode comes out, we're both doing Wizard World. Wizarding Days. Wizarding Wizarding Days. <laughs> oh my gosh, kill me. <laughs> Sorry. No, I like you. Wizarding Days <laughs> is a, a local one here in uh, Salt Lake that does, well, I guess it's like outside, it's at the county fairgrounds, something like that, I think. That's Salt Lake proper. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they it's like all about wizards and magic and fun stuff. Mm-hmm. It's super fun. It's a little bit of a, like a smaller convention, but yeah. like I've gone and I've judged at it before and just like, it's just such a fun convention. Like yeah. there's always so many like little creative, like their artist alley is essentially the whole, the whole thing. Oh, nice. And there's so many just like creative individuals. Like there was a mini maker there at the last yeah. one that I went to and it was so cool. Like I bought a lot of minis. Yay. Uh, for D&D. So. Oh, that's so fun. And me and Mercedes are going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're in the same cosplay contest. Oh, okay. I was like, wait. <laughs> no. wait. I was like, oh, man, I didn't prep for this fight. at all. It's like, hang on a second. Bring your throwdown costume. <laughs> gotcha. Throwdown costumes. We got this. All right. <laughs> Pennon versus V Fire. <laughs> And then in the parking lot after. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so yeah, if you're going, um, hit us up. Uh, say hi. Uh, share your horror stories or just, yeah, come say hi. Yeah. We'll and... keep an eye out for people. We will be recording uh, there and, you know, being absolute nerds in, yes. you know, cosplay. So <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then... What are in... you going to be wearing? Oh, I... <laughs> 
I didn't have anything like wizardy, so I am doing a uh, sweet tofu from Food Fantasy, which I think is amazing. In his uh, circus alternate outfit, which is like the most obscure thing. Like, let me be from this mobile game DLC side quest outfit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really cute, and I like it. So. Sweet. People are going to think I'm uh, Monokuma from Danganronpa because I have the like half black, half ah. white hair, but it's not Monokuma. I'm excited to see Tofu. Okay. It'll be cute. It's it's cute. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm going to be taking my level up costume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boop, 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 yeah. boop. Originally, I was going to be Hup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From Dark Crystal, because I really love Hup, and I really want to make his wooden spoon sword. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's a video game now, too. <gasps> what? Is it? Yeah. It like, <laughs> came out a few weeks ago, Ooh. based on date of recording. I will... I I, oh. I don't know if this is like a, a like a like a death glare or <laughs> no. I just no. did not have any clue at I'm all. I'm in shock. Yeah, it's a I, it's a Dark I'm Crystal a sh- Tactics. Ooh. What system? Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Kay. Okay. Kay. It's rare that like Mercedes gets one upped on video game yes. news. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself. That's what that face was. It was okay. me being ashamed of myself. Going, what is wrong with me? Do you get to play as Hup? I I don't know. Oh my gosh, I would die if I could play as Hup. Oh my gosh. Aww. Okay. All right. Aww. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into this. Note to self. Dark yes. Crystal game. Got it. Yes. Okay. I'm excited to make Celadon this year, too. Yes. She's one of my hashtag goals. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, let's see, later this in April, I'm doing Soccer Con, and I'll be judging at their contest. And I haven't officially announced that one yet, but cool. I'll be there. And then I'll also be recording and saying hi and probably be judging most of Friday, but they have their contest really early on Saturday. Oh. So I have, like, everything afternoon free oh nice That's yeah gonna be relaxing. so i'm gonna go have fun do some photo shoots and say hi to people at con and do yeah. some interviews and get the stress out right in yeah, the morning I'm and then relax the rest of the time. I'm, I'm really excited <laughs> um but yeah cool. that's that's co- that's convention news for the next little bit nice oh, yeah. um, oh i never got to actually what i was wearing oh um <laughs> No, no, I just talk wasn't over you. Wear. No, you're good. You're good. Mercedes is going naked. <laughs> naked? No, gross. Naked is not a cosplay pan, and it's not a cosplay. <laughs> there is a cosplay that I that I I've been having having in the back of my mind up from the Ooh. Hawkeye comic. Oh no, where he's getting shot at, <laughs> and he's naked, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and there's just a superimposed face shot of Hawkeye around the inappropriate bits uh-huh. and, the and, I, and, I, and I think that would be such a fun <laughs> cosplay just to walk around in like a nude underwear kind of thing uh-huh. with like a cardboard cutout of a uh-huh. Hawkeye head oh just on, on the front and the back and I just think that'd be hilarious I believe you got, you in you David Hawkeye's face from like a like the live action Marvel universe. Jeremy like, Renner. Do, yeah, yeah. Oh my Jeremy God. Renner's face. <laughs> then it just he looks like he's disappointed in everyone. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. Oh, sorry. What costume are you wearing? I will be wearing uh, Link, but uh, the Hylian tunic. Nice. But with the ruby circlet. And the sand shoes, because that's my favorite Commodore in the game, and I just I mean, felt like making up a co- weird combo. The nice thing with Breath of the Wild is any combination is technically canon. You can yes. wear them mix match however you want. Yes. I just noticed a lot of people who do the cosplays don't usually like do the mix and match, yeah, but I'm yeah. like, I want to do this. But you can. You can. It's totally allowed. Ah, so that actually can bring us into our topic for the day. Yeah. Because there's a ton of embroidery that I'm doing on it. <laughs> Well, I'm super excited because I feel like, um, not that I don't like our social topics and things like that, but we haven't like mm-hmm. got to talk shop for like weeks. Yeah. And so I'm really excited about this episode. Me too. Would it's... you like to introduce it? Yes. So I do a ton of hand embroidery for a lot of my cosplays. I just love the, it's very therapeutic just to sit down and just hand stitch just a design onto something. And it can take a long time. Uh, a long time. Thousand yard stare. Uh-huh. Uh, but it can look really, really good on your costume and add a lot of life to it. And so, yes. Uh, once again, I'll have um, uh, extra visuals added to the blog site. 
So that way, if anybody wants to be like, oh, what is this thing? Um, I'll have it up on there for visuals. Uh, but today, like, I just want to kind of cover a lot of the terminology. Because when I first started doing embroidery, uh, that was uh, Ordon Link. Mm -hmm. um, I did this stitch on Ordon Link that wasted a lot of thread the way that I was doing it. But it looked really cool. And I felt like I had come up with my very own hand stitch. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a stitch I came up with all on my own. And when I showed it to the judges at a contest, they're like, oh, that's a stem stitch. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Oh, that's a real thing. Uh -huh. And then I actually looked up stem stitch and found a way that used way less thread. <laughs> hey! So knowing the terminology can be very, very helpful. And so mm -hmm. that's my kind of goal with this episode is to kind of talk about embroidery and then uh, along with alternate uh, methods that you can use. So because embroidery can be very time consuming, mm -hmm. but there are other methods that you can do to create a pattern on a costume that doesn't require <laughs> that kind of time or the added weight of extra thread and things like that, depending on what you're aiming for. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, like for this Hylian tunic, instead of hand stitching all the pattern on there, I could have just painted it on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I really like how it looks all embroidered. No, so. it looks cool. And you can yeah. touch it. And it's got all the it texture. Feels good. <laughs> yes. I have it in front of me right now. Mercedes. What? <laughs> no, um, it's fine. It's just, just it's just nobody can see what you're doing. No, no one can see what I'm doing. I'm feeling up my fabric yeah. right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just watching videos of stem stitching now, so don't, oh, mind, nice. me. don't mind me. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. So yeah, I'll have a visuals up. Um very good. Yeah. So uh, Panna, do you have any questions about embroidery? I know you don't do it a lot, so I thought I, you could ask questions, um, maybe. Well, the thing was, like, I I was looking through my old costumes, and I do it more often than I thought. Oh, good. Um, so my background in embroidery stitching is in cross stitch. Ah. So I've done cross stitch since I was probably like eight or nine years old. Um, I was gonna say who who hasn't though like yeah. I love 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 loved cross stitch as a kid. Well, I think it depends on on your family and yeah. like how you were raised and things. Because like I'll say that to some people and they're like, no, I've never even touched a cross stitch. So um, yeah, it's yeah, it, I don't know. It's fun. It cross is cross stitches. Yeah, I haven't gone back and done cross stitch. Um, for those who have not heard of or done cross stitch before. It's uh, a type of fill stitch for embroidery, but it's made up of little X's, um, and they can be super, super tiny to the point that you can't even tell they're little X's, or they can be, like, pretty big on a specific type of fabric that has the holes already pre-punched and, like, woven so that you have all the... It's like a little grid, Yeah, Yeah, basically. you can usually get, like, like kits for them, yeah. and the fabric already kind of fills like a grid, yeah. and, like, it's a great way to start learning yeah. how to do embroidery. Yeah, yeah. Like, cross-stitch, it's... Uh, it's a very easy one to learn mm -hmm. and like you can be very quick at it too yeah. like especially once you start figuring it out you're just like bam 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 and you yeah. just crank it out and uh, I didn't do I don't know I rarely spend a ton of time doing like hand embroidered stuff I think the first big project I did was Rapunzel back mm -hmm. in the day when I did the one from Tangled because yes. like her skirt is all hand stitched embroidery stuff i remember that yeah yeah and was i was like <laughs> oh that's fine i can do that um and it took way longer than i thought <laughs> but it was it was fun and i really liked the results and yeah. and then just one of my most recent what, ones what kind of stitch did you use on that one um i did basically like a little outline stitch because hers look very messy yes like you go into the like close-ups on the show and it's just like a, a little outline stitch and then on the hem it's just like a looping stitch the whole way around the hem of the skirt and then like just a fill stitch in one direction on most of the little like flowery shapes. So fill stitch like a satin stitch where you go back and forth? Or... Yeah, it's like a straight one that yes. you just go yeah. through and fill a shape. Yep. That's a satin stitch. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was heard I heard it called fill stitch. Fill stitch I think works as well. So oh, okay. yeah, satin and fill. Okay. Works good. Well. And then <laughs> the most recent one I did was probably the one I'm bringing to Wizarding Days, um, and my my link also. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm not bringing Link to Wizarding Days, but those are the last two projects. And I did um, a lot of hand embroidery on his, like, cuffs and things just mm-hmm. to give it some texture. Because I went through with a lot of bead and gold and all this crazy stuff because he's a fancy desert vow. Fancy. He's such a fancy vow. <laughs> yes. So. Or vi. Oh, yeah. Vi is. Vi? Vo? I can't remember. Voy, vo, voy, voy, voy. Someone told me it was pronounced voy. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. But vo, vo is boy. Oh, okay. Vi is girl. A, so he's pretty he's, vi. He's a pretty vi. Yes. Pretty vi. Yes. So Th- these are words. These are words. <laughs> <laughs> these are words for the Gerudos. Terms for male and female. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got lost. I, I oh, I've been good. looking up some of the stitches you've been talking about, and I looked at They're and fun I, to watch. I found a cross stitching one, and she's cross stitching a Cyndaquil from Ooh, Pokemon, and I'm like, cute. oh, that's so cute. I want to have one now. Aww. That's the nice thing with cross stitch too, is it translates really well into pixel art. Oh yes. Yeah. So like, and and if you see those like, what are those? What are those melty plastic bead things? Perlers. Perlers. Yeah. <laughs> I put in words. Perlers. Like if you have a pattern for a perler, it's also going to work well for a cross, cross stitch. stitch. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just Googling things. Don't mind me. Just, <laughs> I, just, I'm, your, I'm your live audience um, right now. <laughs> I love this. This is great. Uh, so I one stitch that I used to use all the time, and I actually did use it on um, the pants for uh, my uh, current Link build, uh-huh. is uh, uh, it's a chain stitch. I love chain stitch. Yeah. You make a loop, and you loop your next stitch in that loop kind of thing, and you just kind of go at it that way, and it makes this cute little kind of loop pattern on your fabric. And uh, I use that, uh, a very, like, big loop version of it, on uh, my sister's Princess Agatha cosplay. Aww. All over the skirt. Yeah. <laughs> it took forever. Oof. Um, <laughs> like, because it's all wavy. And yeah. so I had to make sure I was making that wavy curve line all through everything. And I even showed her how to do it, and she did some of it as well. Oh, cute. Uh, the only downside with, depending on how you do your chain stitch, is that if you accidentally miss and pull one they all start coming undone (laughs) that is true that is true so the reason i originally started doing chain stitch in my costumes was because of link and i thought it was a good pun because i was like oh i could use it to do accents on link and it's a chain chain stitch because it's a chain link (laughs) but i'm i love it so i used that on it wasn't ordon because i did like just some regular big old yarn stitches on that one but uh i think it was twilight princess yeah i did all the like doo doos around with a chain stitch yeah i need to look up some terms really quick because okay chain stitch and stem stitch are like the two that i always remember because those are the two i mostly yeah. use um uh, on my hylian tunic right now for an outline i'm using a split stitch mm-hmm. and uh, a split stitch is where you make like your initial stitch and then you come back and you split the, uh, your previous stitch to come out of the fabric. Mm-hmm. I, that one's definitely going to need a visual. <laughs> um, but it's you're splitting your previous stitch to make your new one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really like how that one looks because it has a very, um, at least on a small scale, has a very chain stitch sort of look to it. But it's a little straighter, like mm, thinner. Nice, nice. Um, so that's another outline stitch that I like to use. And that's what I'm using on my Hylian tunic where I use the chain stitch on uh-huh. the, the pants for the outline. Nice. I'm blanking yeah. on the term for the one I like to use, but it's it's one where you kind of like you'll do like a little jump in the stitch and then you'll come back under and you'll hit it like halfway, but it doesn't loop through it. It goes to the mm-hmm. side of That's it. That's a stem stitch. Is it? Yep. Oh. That's a stem stitch. I thought the stem one was the one where it had the little branches going off the sides. Yeah. It's because you can easily add that in. Oh. Yeah. A lot of these you can very easily like look on look up out look up online. There mm-hmm. we go. And there's millions of tutorials out mm-hmm. there. Um, the one I need to get good at is the one where you're just doing like a little nub, like you use it for like a period at the end of a sentence or something, and it's just like a looped bit, and you make like a little poof, like a, <laughs> this is like a nub. I don't know how to describe. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, that's the main thing I wanted to get out of this was like, what? where's the terminology that you want to... 
mm-hmm. you know, keep track of. Uh, you got like your running stitch. That's the one where it looks like a sewing machine. Yeah. Because it's like they're right next to each other. Yeah. Uh, you got your back stitch, which kind of does a similar thing um, backwards. I don't know how to explain that. Um, <laughs> That's usually the one I use for outlining when I need yeah. it to just be a tidy straight line is the back one. Because I get straighter lines when I'm looping back rather oh. than going straight. I mixed it up. Okay. So yeah, the back stitch is the one that looks kind of like a sewing machine because you go oh, okay. back to get that second one in Yeah. while you're like evenly lining them up kind of thing. And a running stitch is uh, when it has gaps between them. Uh. So where it kind of looks like what usually you see people draw on like artwork and whatnot for stitches. They have that that yeah, gap yeah, between yeah. them. That's a, a running stitch. There we go. I was like, how, did, how am I mixing this up? Um, all right, and then yeah, split stitch and chain stitch. Those are those are really the big main outline ones uh, for for doing outlines. You can also use a chain stitch to fill in. It just takes a lot of lines to do it. Oof. Yeah, yeah. It would take a take a decent amount of time to do that um, for filling in color. My f- current favorite one, I use this on The Wanderer and now on Link, is a weave stitch. Hmm. And so it's where you just kind of make, uh, it's it looks like woven fabric because mm-hmm. uh, you just go vertical a bunch of times and then you come across horizontal and you go under, over, under, oh, over, under, Oh, you do under, like a over. basket yeah. through it? <laughs> under, over, under, <laughs> over. Yeah, like a basket. And uh-huh. you get to the other side and you just pin it down oh that's and fun I, I like that one a lot because it can cover big areas without yeah. creating really loose strands of fabric mm. um and, or, or not loose strands of fabric loose strands of thread mm-hmm. there we go because it's kind of holding itself down and if there's an area that seems like it's still kind of loose you can go and do a, a tack stitch and just kind of tack it down a bit nice couching that's the other one. Yeah, okay. Couching is another way you can do outlines. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we're jumping all over the place. Sorry, <laughs> listeners. Um, that's the one I was trying to we're remember. We're like very wild and free this episode. We don't have notes yes. or an outline and we're just going for it. Going for it. This is this is always fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. No, couching is another way you can do an outline where you lay down a, like a thicker piece of thread or uh, um, for Princess Zelda when I made that for Lexus. And was having her kind of learn all these different stitches. Nice. She did couching for the pattern that was at the bottom of Zelda's dress. Aww. Uh, we took a, a silver uh, yarn with that had some sparkle in it mm-hmm. and laid that out over the pattern. And then the couching part is where you just kind of tack that thread to the fabric with a, a similar color, much thinner piece of thread. And like couching looks really cool. It really makes a pattern pop. Yeah. And because you're, you're not pulling any of that thicker thread under the fabric. You're just letting it lay on top and then just kind of tacking it in place. Right, right. Uh, couching looks super cool. Yeah. Um, uh, I, again, I like using that for like thicker stuff, stuff that really needs to pop and feels fancier. <laughs> um, it's w- one step away from gold work, I, th- I feel. <laughs> yeah, it's similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another fill stitch you can use is... You know, satin stitching, where you go back and forth, that works great in small areas. If you start getting into bigger and bigger shapes, doing a satin stitch, which is just taking, you know, one line of thread, crossing it all the way across your fabric, and then, you know, pinning it down on the other side of whatever shape you're you're filling in. If that gets too long, that can easily snag on stuff. And so one thing you can do is a short, long stitch, where you kind of divide up what you're sewing into short and long. You do a short sti- short satin stitch and then a long one and then a short one and then a long one. And then you fill in the other half with short and long ones. And it just kind of like fills it in. Boop, 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 boop. I hope that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> that is the hard part about talking yeah. about like something that's very visual. Yes. Um, but like, I like that one a lot. I use that on my pants. Do I have my pants here? Show your pants to the audience, Mercedes. I sure hope you brought your pants. <laughs> yes, I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I just can't remember if I put them in my bag. No, I don't think I did. Okay. Oh, I was showing you in, in person, Pannon, but I'll Everybody have... Everybody look at your pants. Look at your pants. Yes. Uh, there's these two little uh, gold things that are um, on Link's pants, mm-hmm. and... Uh, those I did a, a long, short sort of thing. I made it more a little more chaotic. Um... 
because I thought it looked cool. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you, you don't have to, like, follow things, you know, like, rule for rule on how to do each of these stitches. Experiment. Sure. And try and figure things out. Uh, try it, like, rule for rule first, because... Uh, that usually means it's going to save you a lot of thread because it's prob- probably the tutorial online has the most efficient way of, you know, doing a stem stitch versus what I did where I went over it twice and used way too much thread. <laughs> oh, that uh, reminds me that, like, yeah? one of the first things you need when you're going to start doing embroidery. Oh, yes. Get yourself a hoop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please don't try to do embroidery without a hoop. Yes. Um, unless your fabric is very, very, very stiff. Um, yeah, we can probably go over like basic uh, items tools. that you need. Tools. Uh, yeah, a hoop is definitely number one. I I mostly or, use plastic hoops. Yeah, but wood ones, the fabric doesn't slip in them as much. Yeah, and so I have technically both. I just it's green. I'm gonna keep using it because it's green. <laughs> I am s- just weirdly stubborn that way. It's okay. Um, if they had a green wooden hoop. <laughs> You could paint it green. I could. Why am I, have I not done this? <laughs> um, I know what to get Mercedes next Christmas. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, you definitely want to get a hoop. They have a lot of different sizes. And uh, like I have one, two, three, four sizes at home. Um, I've got a one that's bigger than this one. And one that's in between, and then a super small one, which I actually have right here. So somewhere between a 12-inch diameter, a 10-inch diameter, a 4-inch <laughs> diameter, yeah. and a 3-inch diameter. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it goes, it goes four, you. I think it goes, yeah, four, six, is this six? It has it on the number on here. It looks yes. like six. Yeah, four, six, uh, 10, 12, I think is what they usually go. Nice. And uh, you can also get oval ones Mm. so like if you're working on something where like the circle uh hoop doesn't work just right you can get oval ones and they tend to run pretty cheap yeah they're like a couple bucks maybe yeah and like they'll have like a little like uh screw thingy on the side so you can tighten it as much as you need so that way like don't worry about wrinkling your fabric you can iron it when you're done Mm. but you want to have that sucker tight so Yes, in like ninety nine circum ninety nine percent circumstances. Oh yes. No, when you're doing velvet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, depending on your velvet, you might leave like creases in the fabric. Oh. Um, which I found out when I was doing my sweet tofu costume, um, because he's got like a little stuff on his lapel, and I decided velvet would be a fun fabric, <laughs> and um, so I did it without a hoop i just put a lot of stabilizer in it ah because when i tried putting it in the hoop i'd pull it out and it had like creases and you can iron kind of iron things out of velvet if you're careful it's just a little tricky yeah you usually get like a towel and then iron the towel because it has like the little fuzzy texture like velvet does yeah so you're not like smushing your velvet and melting it but anyway hey learning new things so be careful with your fabric choices and what you're embroidering because depending on what it is it may damage the fabric i guess yeah so definitely like watch what kind of fabric you're using also like speaking of stabilizer that's another thing you're going to want to get yes is like interfacing or stabilizer for the back of your fabric you might think oh my fabric's thick enough it'll be fine on its own it makes a world of a difference to how that uh pattern will hold up after you take it out of the hoop Yes. It helps strengthen it, it reinforces whatever you're making, and just increases the life of your pattern so that it's not just falling apart later on or causing weird pulls in your fabric and things like that. We so, don't want that. There's all kinds of different interfacing. I personally like the iron-on kind. Of course, I've mangled my fabric recently, so a lot of this is already coming off. <laughs> no one can see it, Mercy. No, they can't, but I can talk about it. <laughs> It's already coming off, but it, no, it looks is, amazing. It's perfect, Mercedes. It's I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you ironed it on so uh, well. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we'll pretend I did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like you can get like all sorts of different thicknesses. Uh, if you're making something light and you want to keep it that way, you can actually find lighter interfacing that'll still give that strength to support the stitches. And uh, not heavily bulk down your fabric. 
Uh, and the needles. There are, like, specific embroidery needles. Yes. I am terrible at keeping track of which ones are which. Y- yeah. <laughs> so I am I guilty use, of that also. I use whatever needles available. Yeah. <laughs> I know that in certain fabrics, I uh, it's better, like, sometimes it's better to use a sharp needle, where in other fabrics it's better to use a dull needle. Yeah. Uh, where, like, if it's, if it's a fabric that already has a bunch of, like, pre-built holes in it, you want to use a dull needle so that you can put the thread through the hole. Mm. You don't want to have a sharp needle where it will be able to go through anything. You want that duller needle to be able to grab your holes and go through there because those holes are going to be what you're lining up your pattern to. Uh, it's actually a lot easier to do patterning and like cross stitches, uh, things like that, where it has to be perfectly even mm-hmm. on a fabric that has holes in it already. Yes, it really uh, is. Like, I'm embroidering on li- linen right now, and, like, my stitches are not even. Um, but luckily for the stitch that I'm using, that's fine. Because <laughs> mm. um, uh, my, my woven stitch, I kind of want it to look a little rough. Um, and just it just creates a little bit more texture with that. But uh, if I wanted it to be perfectly even, I would probably pick something that has more of a, like, textured pattern in the fabric itself that I could follow. But I didn't do that on this one. And that's fine, because I like how it looks. <laughs> that reminded me when you're talking about different sizes of needle, um, is thread is kind of important with embroidery, because yes. I know a lot of people getting into embroidery don't know that your embroidery thread is made of six strands. Yes. And you're actually supposed to pry those apart and put in a certain number of strands depending on your project. That was the exact mistake I made doing Ordon Link. <laughs> We've all we've all been there. It makes the pattern super pop out if yeah, you use the full it's strand. It's super thick. It's <laughs> and maybe that's what you want in your project. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can divide it down to like one strand. You can do two, three, four, five, six because they all come as six. Yep. Um, it also like helps your thread last a lot longer if you're not using yes. <laughs> the full thickness on all of them. But um, but yeah, so you can use like a, do a more delicate looking one or you can do a more like industrial looking one. It just depends on your project. And with cross stitch, I think the standard is two, two yeah. strands. I think so, but, yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm using two on all of mine because I was trying to make the thread on my pants last as long as I could make them last. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't have enough. Mm. And I still ended up having to go by. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Um, I did make a, a, on um, this little guy. I'll put a picture on the website. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it has a picture of the weave stitch done with one strand, double strands, and three strands. Oh, that was smart. So I was trying to figure out how many strands I wanted to use yeah, like for that. my woven stitch and kind of figure out what the thicknesses would look like together. And you get to keep that for your portfolio stuff when you present the costume yeah i can do that actually yeah (laughs) but yeah my my conclusion my conclusion was that uh two and three looked uh, like two and three strands look similar enough that if i just did the two strands and saved myself some extra thread that i'd be okay doing that they filled about the same Mm. uh space on it so i was like yeah i can do that and save me some thread that actually brings me into another point about thread is if you're if you think you might run out embroidery thread is numbered so they all have a skew number on them that tells you like this color but this number next to it so even though you might be like oh well i know it was goldenrod it might not be listed as goldenrod it might be gold 052 yeah um so make sure you're getting that exact skew number that's so genius <laughs> cuz like i have a hard time telling colors apart yeah. sometimes so i'm just like but is it is it actually yellow? It's like hex code for <laughs> yes. embroidery. Oh, that's yeah. so helpful. Yeah. It's super nice. Like so I um because I ran out of the green thread I needed for Link's pants, I was like, "Hey, I'm going to quickly run into Joanne's." And I ran into Joanne's and I got all the way to the thread and I realized that I had left in the car uh, I actually used to have pinned to this um the number that I needed <laughs> for <laughs> The thread, but I had left this in the car, and but oh, my husband no. was waiting out there, so I called him up and I was like, "Hey, what's the number on there?" And I was able to pick it up, and I didn't nice. have to do like a color matching thing. Yeah, because that's it, always a pain in the butt. Yeah, to do the color matching, or you think you know what color it is, and you go in, and you're just like, "There's like five colors, and they look the same." Yeah, and you realize you've made a grave error. <laughs> yeah. So, 
So keep those numbers. Make yes. sure you know what threads they are. Yeah, keep the numbers. <laughs> I, I usually will, like my little four inch ring, um, I usually will stick a piece of fabric in it, use that for testing designs, and then I'll also pin the colors that I'm using to it. Oh, you should stitch what the number is, oh write it God. with the thread. <laughs> that is a great you'll idea. You'll never forget. <laughs> That is an amazing <laughs> idea, actually. I think I will. Patented pen in. <laughs> I'll write that on there, too. Patented by pen. <laughs> well, and that's one less thing that you have to include in your, you know, documentation. Yeah. Is like, and this is the skew number yeah. in yeah. the lining. Yeah. Nice. In the nice. lining. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's amazing. Hooray. Yes. So, yes. Uh, keep track of those numbers. They're important. They will help you find the exact color you were using rather than having to guess. <laughs> Yay. Uh, yeah. Any other tools and things? Mm. Like, put on a podcast while you're doing it. It gets boring real fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so you'll need something to keep <laughs> See, your brain busy. Yeah, I do it at work because, like I said, call center. And luckily, they let me have arts and crafts at my desk. Oh, so nice. And so I just kind of do, 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 do. That's how I got Agatha done. Was yeah. I, uh, it wasn't a call center, but a, I worked at a library. Yeah. And I was able to just do that while I waited for students to come in. Yeah. It was so nice. Yeah, I did uh, write you that way. I did Fairy Godmother that way because she's got all the embroidery on her bodice yeah. and uh, oh gosh i love your fairy godmother i oh, totally forgot you. about that um and then oh, i can't remember what i was making oh i made a whole bunch of plushies for christmas this year and that's what i was doing ah. sewing itty bitty clothing yeah you can try watching something uh probably something that doesn't have subtitles because yeah gonna that's yourself. always my struggle Ooh, ooh, yeah. that's find what we should have when we post listen. this episode what? is have people list their favorite shows to watch while crafting yes because i am always struggling to find a good one because if it's too compelling i want to watch the show right but if it's not compelling enough i'm just like bored out of my mind mm -hmm. but I struggle if it has subtitles because I want to sit there and read the subtitles. And yeah, and next thing you know, you look down at your embroidery and you're like, yeah. oh, that's off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yes, yeah. So you definitely want something that you can listen to more than watch mm -hmm. uh, because it can get pretty mind-numbing after doing three hours of embroidery. Also, your fingers will get tired. Uh, yeah. This is something that I haven't oh, gotten for thimbles. myself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was going to be thimbles. Yes. I do have, well, actually, I do have one leather thimble. And oh, I nice. I love it. It's great yeah. for really pushing things through tougher um, fabric, and it's comfortable on my fingers. Mm. Um, but I've built up calluses. Yeah. And so I don't really use thimbles much anymore. <laughs> so when I did mascots forever ago for, like, the major league sports teams, um, we had to sew through all kinds of crazy thick things, and sometimes it wouldn't go through a sewing machine. So I had what I called my super thimble. Oh. <laughs> and it was uh, a rubber thimble, and then I covered it with a leather, a leather sleeve. Nice. So I, like, just made it out of leather, and I just wrapped it around and sewed sewed one side shut and I doubled it and I could push that through like I could just push the tip of the needle like if I wanted to. That's amazing. <laughs> it was so great for like gripping and pulling and pushing and okay. like give you great control over needle. Yeah like they have those metal thimbles out there but I highly recommend getting like a leather one or doing yeah. like a custom one like that. That yeah. one sounds amazing. Yeah. Especially if you're working with thick thick fabrics. Yeah I love a leather thimble. Um, the rubber ones are nice, too, because they grip. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't get the ones that go over your finger, they also have just like little plastic, not plastic, rubber discs mm -hmm. that you fold over the needle to pull through. Yeah, those are nice. Um, so if you don't want your, I don't know, finger to get all pruney, <laughs> then you can do that. Um, yeah. But yeah, especially if you're not doing something where it's like counted cross stitch, where it already has the holes pre-punched, you're... Gonna, your fingers are going to get tired. Yeah, they're going to get very tired. Give yourself breaks, stretch out your hand Ooh. every couple of hours because like, you're going to want to take good care of your hand's health. <laughs> I heard a really good way to like stretch your fingers out when you're doing a lot of hand sewing is to shuffle cards. Oh. Um, so like when I am doing stuff at work, I bring a couple decks of cards and so I'll sew for a while and then I'll like play a couple rounds of solitaire with myself and you know shuffle the cards 20 times or so and that's a really good idea and it gets it gives them a little stretch i might have to incorporate that cuz i usually yeah. just end up just pulling my fingers backwards yeah yeah <laughs> And I just mean, I'm like sure holding it for a little helps. bit. I'm sitting here doing it. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stretch yeah. those fingers out. 
like a weirdo. Like a weirdo. <laughs> so it's like you're doing a podcast weird. and stretching my it's fingers like, out. Shuffling cards looks less weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, then it just looks like you're ready for Vegas. I am so yes. ready for. So... Oh, don't say that. Oh, I can't I'm so go. sorry. <laughs> so I have a funny tangent. It's a it's a tangent, but oh. it's cosplay related. So the deck of cards I'm using is a deck that I custom printed for D. Gray Man. Ooh. It's Alan Walker's oh. set, Ooh. and so it has like his diamond thing on the back. And the reason I play with it all the time is because I want it to look worn in when I do the costume. Ah. So it looks like he played it all the time because I'll be like, oh, I played like 10,000 games of solitaire on this card Clever panic. Yeah. Look at you. I'm, I'm wearing it in. Also now I'm like, I want to custom print a card set. That sounds awesome. Arts cow. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's where I got it. Okay. That's going to happen now. Yeah, I did all just did the diamonds in Photoshop and then was like, print this for me. And they were like, <laughs> here are your cards. And I was like, that's baller. I have Alan Walker's cards. Oh, I just thought of another way to fill in um, uh, color. Uh-huh. Uh, it's called a seed stitch. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that one it doesn't require you to fill in the whole space with color. You just put in little like seeds it looks kind of like um um sprinkles yeah yeah it looks like sprinkles and it's like it's a cute texture it's a great way to add just like hey this is supposed to be filled in with this color but i'm adding texture to it and it just creates such personality uh i i really like the seed stitch also it saves a lot of thread because you don't have to fill in that whole color (laughs) yes um Um, i was also going to mention um Things you can use for accent, like beads and sequins. Yes. So your embroidery mm-hmm. doesn't have to just be thread. You can yeah. also loop in beads. If you want a little bit of sparkle, you can do sequins, um, all kinds of stuff. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Adding in sequins looks really cool. You would know about adding sequins. Eh? <laughs> 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 the laughter of dying inside. <laughs> I think there was like 20,000 placed individually by hand good grief really yeah oh on just that little sheath dress wow yeah wow yeah all right so it anyway can be done. <laughs> um yeah adding in beads looks really cool i've done that on a like just like minor stuff yeah. uh the zelda lexus zelda we added a couple little beads at the bottom oh like, it wasn't like a ton because we were, like, running out of time, but, uh-huh. like, we wanted to, you know, make it special. It's Zelda. Yeah. yeah. You know? She's got to be pretty. DJ's uh, Karogane. Do you remember when yeah. he did that with oh my fi? Oh, my gosh. That was so So, on the back, ago. it was this red dragon, because it's Karogane, yeah. and I did the whole dragon out of, like, beads and thread. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's one of those, like... So, I'm... It's one of the stupid things I do, but I love to do, is, like... The back of the costume. I always have these costumes where the back looks amazing and you never <laughs> see it in pictures. Yes. So, photographers, more photos of the backs of cosplays, <laughs> please. <laughs> the back needs attention too, I promise. Yeah, I mean, with Fi, I definitely got a ton of pictures of the back because he has that oh, coat. Yeah. But with Kurogane, we didn't get too many mm. because it's Kurogane and the rest of his costume looks cool, you know? Yeah. So, still, that's awesome. Yeah, I had fun with it. Uh, um, <sighs> Let's see. I think we've covered a lot of really good, like, basic stitches, terminology that can get people started. Um, mm-hmm. So what about, like, alternative routes to doing embroidery? Like? like applique? Oh, like applique. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. still it's still I was like, sewing. is this the segue into applique? Because I was waiting for that. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's um, still kind of a sewing thing. Yeah. 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 Um, so applique, I know we've talked about before. It's basically putting one fabric on top of another fabric Mm -hmm. and then sewing it down or ironing it down or whatever method you use. Um, Embroidery is really fun though, because you can do take, use a variety of the embroidery techniques that you used just on regular fabric to tack down your applique. Yes. Yes. So make an amazing combo. Yeah. Applique and embroidery, like, Oh, it makes things look so good. And I'm just like drooling over all of the costumes I've seen this in now. Yeah, (laughs) it makes a really pretty like outline and you can choose the shape. You can choose the design that you want to use to like attach it to your fabric. Um, You can even just machine do a satin stitch, which is just like a zigzag um, Mm -hmm. and just back and forth and attach it with that. Yes. Um, You can 
do basically all the stitches we've talked about to attach your piece. Um, just depends on your project. I'm actually going to be doing some of those for Celadon. I'm really excited. Oh, that'll be so cool. I, <laughs> I did so many picture searching for this, but like under her giant dark blue dress, she has like a dress with a tunic down the front and it's all embroidered and it's in half a second of footage but i have it screen cast oh my gosh that's so cool <laughs> so i'll send it to you i want to just like yeah ogle over that that's gonna be right. amazing I, uh, that's I, just garbage <laughs> i saw i saw that dress and i like immediately took screen caps because nowhere had it online that's so good and then i just posted them all and was like if anybody else needs these here take them <laughs> Yes. Do it. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Share, share, and share that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hope that there's like some kind of art book or costume book released on it because the oh costumes in that TV series are so good. Yes. But <laughs> yeah, Hup, Hup's wearing a gambeson. I did not know that. Yeah, I was like looking at his costume. And I was just like, he's wearing a full on gambeson. Look at this kid. <laughs> he knows what's up, except for spoons not actually being swords. But he's yeah, wearing well, a gambeson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's adorable. I need his spoon to turn into an actual sword magically while, like, he's fighting or something. I would just, like, Aww. die. I'd be like, yes, my Hup. Aww. Hup is a playable character. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> also, D&D rules, improvised weapon, it's a thing. Come on. Yeah, there yes. you go. There you hey. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yes. <laughs> now I can't stop thinking about a game. Um, <laughs> Uh, so applique, applique, yes. Uh, it looks awesome. Um, I know there's ways to like iron it on, uh, but I always highly recommend stitching it down after you iron something on. Oh, absolutely. Because over time, it will fall off. Yeah, it's not gonna hold. Like yeah. it can be whatever you think it is. It's not gonna stay because fabric just moves too much. Yeah, for iron on stuff to just stay like that. One of the very first tutorials I ever made was actually for doing uh, satin stitch patches and applique. Oh, cool. Um, because so many friends were doing like the Attack on Titan uh, uniforms. Yes. And those like Wings of Freedom or like the training uniform, they'll have the giant patches on the front, on the back, on the sleeve, you know. Yeah. And I had people, you know, it costs a lot to get them embroidered. Yes. Uh, like, like machine embroidered. Um, so I was like, I'm just going to do a tutorial on how to do them on on at home stuff so so yeah but yeah. iron on stabilizer and lots of satin stitching and embroider if you want mm -hmm. depending on how accurate to the time period you want to be have you tried reverse applique yeah actually my uh World Cosplay Summit costume had reverse applique. Hey. It was hiding again on the back where you couldn't <laughs> see it. <laughs> but um, so Tsutsugami Guy is the character I played um, for World Cosplay Summit. And he has this like crystallized prince looking version. Ooh. And under his cloak, it's not in the anime for more than a single frame but, but it's that's in the art book frame. it's exactly exactly <laughs> um but he has like all these like black stripes going through his uh white uniform that's only when the cape is flipped up in the back that you actually see it so i was like oh, okay i kind of want to try that with reverse applique so i did it and then the the bottom layer i did like a black crystal taffeta sort of thing so it shimmers mm -hmm. and comes through and matches with the crystals nice. yeah so for those who don't know what reverse applique is, so applique is when you take fabric and you put it on top of fabric, you know, like a pattern on top of your base fabric. Reverse applique is when you take your base fabric and you essentially cut a hole in it mm -hmm. and put your decorative fabric underneath. Yep. And so that's what I used for uh, the Wanderer's tunic. Yeah. Or, or not tunic, uh, the tabard. There yeah, we go. yeah. The tabard that he wears. Uh, because what I did on there was that I took three pieces of fabric. I had my base fabric underneath um uh well not base fabric my white colored fabric underneath for the uh symbol the sigil that's all over his tabard mm -hmm. 
And then um, I put brown for when he's not possessed and then a black, messier version for when he is possessed so that I can <laughs> flip my tabard around. Nice. And then reverse applique was really nice for that because I just had to sew on top of that the pattern. And then I was able to, on both sides, to just rip out yeah. the parts that I wanted to be white. That's cool. And uh, because it's a very rough looking costume, I was yeah. able to just leave those edges rough. Yeah, yeah. Um, where I, normally I would go through and clean that up mm -hmm, um, but mm -hmm. i just left it rough for him because he's a garbage boy no that's fun <laughs> well, i like I playing like... garbage characters okay <laughs> don't I like snort reverse... at me i, like no, I just related to the comment that's all <laughs> oh <laughs> oh david you're not garbage <laughs> no i was talking about like you know hey i appreciate garbage characters every now yes. and again that's what i meant <laughs> oh okay. i'm not garbage i was like you better not think you're garbage because no. i'll fight you on that no. <laughs> i will recognize and my wife will will also you know i i know i'm a freaking God said. <laughs> I was debating if that, that, would, that would be explicit or not, but I think we're good. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you. It's good. It's good. Uh, no, I like a lot of characters who are absolute trash. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to do spoilers for Black Crystal, but <laughs> I definitely don't agree with a lot of Celadon. <laughs> but I love her costume. I know. Um, she comes out of that dress, you're just like, girl. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, what I love about reverse applique, though, is it gives a lot of dimension yes. to your costume. Where, like, applique, you can tell it's like a thing on top of a thing, but it's like uh, reverse applique, it's cool because it's like indented into your fabric and yeah, it can. It feels like it's going inside. Yeah, it looks it looks really cool and it can add a lot of depth to things and. Topography. <laughs> to topography <laughs> to your costume. <laughs> I'm going to take that's that into always... judging and be like, now here's the lowlands of Link's tune. That's exactly <laughs> what I think the... of, though, when I'm doing that. It's like, I'm making topography in my costume. <laughs> it's like, where do I want it to raise up? Okay, uh -huh. that's applique. Where I want to go in, that's reverse applique. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Yep. Uh, Stacking me. things on things. Yep. Ah, so let's see. We did applique, reverse applique. Uh... So what would be after that? Um, oh, I did want to add with applique. Oh. Um, you can do the iron-on one. Another thing you can do is to melt the edges if you're using a synthetic fabric. Oh, yes. Um, and that just helps even if you're going to satin stitch or embroider or any kind of stitch over the top. Um, it helps keep it from fraying. Mm -hmm. um, so I a lot of times I'll pick a synthetic on purpose because I don't want to have to deal with fray later. Yes. Or if I'm going to use a very natural fabric, I'll get an extra <laughs> plasticky iron on for the back. So like a really thick heat and bond sort so of a thing. So it holds it really so good. It, uh, yeah. It. So I know it's melting into the fibers. So it's not going to fray with that. Yeah, that's the most obnoxious thing just to be sitting there trying to stitch oh something down. And there's just fabric fraying all over the place. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you just like walk out of there. And you're like, I'm fuzzy now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say if you're going to do it on a machine to uh, take good care of your needles. Yes. Um, because if your needle starts to dull, it's going to skip stitches. Um, if you are using stuff like heat and bond, keep in mind it is literally melted plastic. Yeah. So um, clean your needle often. Uh, when I was doing forever ago, I did a set of Subasa. I did the whole set of the like cherry blossom cover. Oh my gosh. Um, and so I satin stitched everybody's cherry blossoms and it was so much satin stitch. But I learned the hard way that, you know, you have to clean your needle. And I was using an itty bitty like cheapo home machine. So I would go like three inches and then I had like an alcohol wipe I'd run down the needle. And then I'd go three more inches and then I had an alcohol wipe I'd run down the needle. Goodness. So... Yeah. yeah. Um, depending on the needle, like different things will work. But yeah, needle, yeah. important. <laughs> and if you can get a hold of or have a friend who has an actual embroidery machine yes. for satin stitching. Oh, my gosh. It makes such a difference. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, got, I got to use Melissa's, I'm going to butcher the name, Faf? Faf. Faf. You got it. Okay. You got it. Okay. Faf embroidery machine for... Uh, um, my Art Nouveau chic because yeah. I was like I really needed to get her finished but my machine was struggling hardcore mm. with the, the satin stitch and I was just like I screwed up the timing or something in my machine oh, it's no. fine now well that's good I just don't know why I don't know I might have done something just completely awful with it I don't know but it's fine now but uh, Melissa was like well come try and use my embroidery machine and I was like cool oh my gosh <laughs> 
I will never go back. <laughs> Something to be said about the right tool for the job. Yes. Um, you can also use a quilting machine is really good because um, that's what I use is my uh, my Janome is a, a quilter specific machine. Okay. Um, so it has a lot of different stitch types, but it's also really good at pulling fabric at the same speed. Yeah. Um, and it's specifically made to do stuff like satin stitching and design work through several layers of fabric. So I like that. I love it. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've covered embroidery. Yeah. Lots of embroidery, machine embroidery. Yeah. And beads. And beads. And sequins. And, and lots s- of different stitches. Yes. And, and keeping yourself entertained. And hoopla. Yeah. And hoopla. Uh, <laughs> so I guess like painting on patterns is would be next mm. as like an alternate to an alternative like, alternative yeah um so that would be like using fabric paints and oh it, like when people use like puffy paints and then go over it to give stuff dimension oh that is actually a really cool I stitch. love that that's separate yeah but yes that is actually a really great great pattern idea so you 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 talk about that one. Oh sure. Yeah. Um. So some people, when they're doing stuff like their fill stitch or their satin stitch, they want it to be more raised up. Get that cosplay topography. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so they'll use puff paint to put the design in first, and then they'll go over it with their thread. Um. I would say make sure your puff paint matches your thread or at least is close to it, because then if any peeks through, you're not going to see. Yeah. Like neon green um you can also do a similar thing with foam um like i like getting like the sticky back foam and just cutting something out and then stick it down and you can go over it same way Um, that's really nice because it still will have like the flexibility where like uh the the paint stuff eventually will crack yeah because it dry you know dries over time right right um but no i i really like that Mm -hmm. that method that sounds really cool yeah so yeah. there's lots of different ways that you can kind of sneak stuff in. I mean, or you could even use uh, interfacing if you wanted yeah. um, to to get some nice raises to your fabric if you want it to pop. Get that topography. topography. I'm going to start using that now. <laughs> that was really bad. Cosplay oh. topography. <laughs> ah. Uh, yeah, so I guess the last thing would be using fabric paint to put a pattern on. Um, I would use it for very simple patterns. Like, if you have something super complex on your costume, uh, I would either, like, get a patch of it made or <laughs> try some other method. But, like, unless you paint it on it and you're really amazing at it. Ooh, ooh. There's, um, I don't know. I don't want to say don't do it, but I don't want to say do do it because it's, like, it's definitely the cheaper alternative to do an embroidery i think it really depends um but i will say uh also vinyl cuts <gasps> vinyl cuts that's um, right. are really good for getting patterns but not just for getting patterns that you're going to iron on if you use like the vinyl that's sticky instead of the iron on you can use it as a um what is it not a template a uh, stencil you can use it as a stencil for when you're painting so then yes. you don't have to uh, rely on getting your brush strokes exactly right. You just cordon off the area and then just go in with a stencil brush mm-hmm. and it looks really clean. There you go. So that's that's what I like uh, to do. Uh, when Sadie and I did Octavia, mm-hmm. uh, the bottom skirt uh, that's supposed to be like a mermaid skirt coming out yeah. has uh, a million of the... Well, yeah, the whole thing had the whole thing had this. I I forgot how much. Oh my gosh, my brain wanted to block out a ton of that. I mean, Sadie did most of the work on this, um, but it has that fleur de lis pattern mm-hmm. where it's a navy fabric with a gold fleur de lis on it. Uh-huh. And what we did to create that was that um, it was like two hundred something. Sadie has the exact number. It's probably even more than that. There were a lot of these fleur de lises that she <laughs> hand drew using a stencil uh-huh. onto uh iron on um uh just like interfacing stuff mm-hmm. and she uh drew that on went through hand cut every single one of them mm-hmm. and then we ironed it onto the fabric and then took fabric gold paint and uh-huh. just sprayed the whole thing Oof. and it turned out great yeah I don't think we'll ever do it that method again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, not for, you know, a bazillion fleur de lises. Maybe for like a couple on something, 
but for a bazillion of them, no, don't do that, guys. Um, <laughs> we were like, next time we're going to get that just fabric printed. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, which is also another method yeah. where you can actually get your, if there's like a massive repeating pattern across yeah. something, print that sucker. Yeah. <laughs> Don't don't kill yourself <laughs> trying to hand do that all yourself. Like, uh, save yourself some time. Or if you want to, you know, take all the time doing that, you can as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just depends on what kind of look you want. Yeah. Um, this is giving me yeah. lots of thoughts because I really want to make um, the King's Glaive uniform from Final Fantasy XV. Oh, yes. And it has embroidery like that on the cuffs and a huge one down the back that's like a sword and like all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I I don't know how I want to do it, but now I have so many options in front of me. You sure do. You sure do. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Uh Uh-huh. That would be, there's a lot of really cool ways you could do that. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, so yeah, there's 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 a bazillion options mm-hmm. for creating mm-hmm. those patterns on your costumes now. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, can you think of anything else, Dad? Uh. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got all excited about vinyl cut stuff because I like doing that. But yeah. um, vinyl cut can look really really nice. Yeah, you can do a whole lot of detail, but then you have to like peel it very carefully yourself and. And people forget that. They're like, oh, you just printed it. No, no, you no. Ha- you still have to be careful. And you still have to. Yeah, it's like there's there's still some skill in applying that. Come on, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's uh, the, the nice thing with cosplay is there's no one right way to do it. Mm-hmm. And there's no one right interpretation of a character. So I'd love seeing how people tackle different obstacles and i love seeing like that's one of my favorite things with judging is like getting to see so many different interpretations and what parts people poured all their love and effort into and yeah yeah so yeah it's like i i really love putting a lot of like hand embroidery into my work because i just feel like it just creates this look that i enjoy yeah and that's just my personal preference this is the look that i love mm-hmm. but i also know that you know lots of other people who have made the hylian tunic have done applique on it mm-hmm. or they've uh done a simple stencil pattern and used fabric paint to yeah. put the pattern on which is probably takes way less time than i'm taking on this <laughs> um and i'm definitely like that thought keeps going through my brain of <laughs> are you gonna need to just you know drop this and do paint <laughs> which i'm like I would be okay with because it does capture that look. I've yeah. seen people who've done that and I really like how their Hylian tunics have turned out. Yeah. I'm just trying to do the things that I like to do. Yeah. On top of that. Um, so do it. Come next week or not next week. Not next week. Oh, sorry. no. Whenever, <laughs> whenever we're at Wizarding Days, you can tell if I gave up and did the fabric oh, paint no. or if I managed to make it all the way through this. So, uh-huh. Yes, I keep distracting myself by playing Breath of the Wild, and I really should be embroidering. <laughs> that's oh my gosh, that's been me with Persona Five, Hollow Knight. Oh, <sighs> Sadie started me playing that mm-hmm. on her Switch, and I was like, "How dare you? I can't play on her Switch all the time." <laughs> oh, all right, Welp. Got any cosplay horror stories? I was trying to think of that. Um, <gasps> I've got one, but it actually, deals with needles. Yeah, I was gonna say mine has to do with hoop embroidery i don't even remember what costume it was but i was like you know i can do this without a hoop and you can imagine how well that turned out um (laughs) yeah the hard part when you're doing embroidery without a hoop is it's really hard to regulate the tension in Mm -hmm. your fabric um so some of the stitches would be tight and some would be loose and it just ended up looking like a nightmare I mm, mm. Aww. so so having an embroidery hoop is very smart. Nice or, or or stabilizer. Yeah. So I guess it's a little less of a horror story then. But uh, when I start embroidering, I build up these massive calluses. Well, uh-huh. not really massive, but like it's enough that like once I'm you know through a certain amount of my project, I don't even hardly notice anything anymore. My fingers get really tough and like. I don't know, lotion's nice to help soften my Uh hands back up again. But there was one time where there was a huge stretch between uh, my last embroidery project and this current one that I was starting. 
And I was like, I got this. It'll be fine. And so I started embroidering, like, at the level of go crazy, you have calluses. Oh, no. Don't. Oh, no. (laughs) I got blisters. Oh. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I had never given myself blisters from embroidery before. Oh, man. I was just like, this is insane. So, like, (laughs) definitely let yourself build up. To the point where you have those calluses so you don't give yourself a blister because it yeah. is it hurts even worse to try and sew yeah. when your finger's all irritated. <laughs> I would also say if you're going to use lotion when you're doing embroidery, like give it time to sink into your yes. skin oh, it's getting and realize there. that your fingers are a little bit tender for a while. Because I was doing that once where I was marathon embroidering and my hands got really dry and I put lotion on the hands and then I went to go like stab the needle into something and my hands were so supple and soft that the needle just went into my hand instead oh. of into the oh. fabric. Oh, so I was like... <laughs> Pan <Pant> man. <laughs> oh. So remember that lotion makes your skin soft and breakable. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that's a constant thing is stabbing yeah. yourself with a needle while embroidering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lotion. I still have Sowers like... kryptonite. Oh Aww. my gosh. <laughs> no, but I have so many like I ha- I'm going to have, like, little old lady hands that are ca- calloused and covered in... We'll have to have, like, a the scars meeting one time oh on, like, gosh, all yes. of our cosplay-related scars. Yes. Because I have so many. That sounds like a cosplay meetup. Yeah. Like, see yeah. this one? My on the elbow. That's for yeah. my burn. I have, yeah. a, I have a scar, actually, on my forearm because uh-huh. I went to, like, one of those group cosplay uh-huh. things. You're like, hey, teach the, have someone teach you Warbler. Uh-huh. And I had someone cut um, <gasps> sorry, part of the pattern. Oh. And I just felt... This kind of pinch. Oh. And I'm like, Ugh. and she goes, oh, I'm sorry. And she drew back and she finished cutting off the pattern off my, my forearm. Ooh. Maybe it's this arm. Yeah, it's this arm. It's right, it's right there. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Ow. So uh, the person who was running the cosplay thing, I don't remember who it was, but uh-huh. she brought safety shears from Ooh. then on. And Ooh. I was like, yeah, that's probably for the best. Probably for Ooh. the best. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was a small little cut, but yeah. it was just enough to scar. And, yeah. It sounds like a great... Um, cosplay meetup of just like uh, and this one's from here and this yeah. one's from yeah. here so i have it's a friend like, who like when we were doing armor for tiger and bunny he got like a really hot hot glue gun mm-hmm. to get the armor together and he was at home just crafting in his boxers oh. and it slipped and the glue went on his inner thigh <laughs> so he has a big old burn scar on his on his leggy oh boy <laughs> Ooh. That's a... They're like, ouch, 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 yeah. ouch. Yeah. I, I think it was like a second or third degree burn because okay. it was so hot. Yeah, hot, I yeah burn, hot glue guns do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I burn my fingers on hot glue all the time, okay? And so when I was helping my brother make his uh-huh. uh, spaceman costume for Gaming Con last year, uh-huh. uh, we are all using hot glue and he just like barely touched it and he got this big old blister on his finger and I was like, what is wrong with your fingers? They're normal fingers, Mercedes. <laughs> That's what happens to normal fingers when you touch hot glue. I was just like, you're not using the hot glue anymore. Oh, you know what? That was actually what I used that double leather thimble for a lot was touching hot glue. Because <laughs> like, I needed to hold something in place while it dried, but it, it was too hot. Uses. So I just hold it with the leather thimble. And then because it's leather, I could just peel it, peel just the peel glue off, off after. <laughs> Amazing. Instead of peeling off your skin. Yeah, but it gave me the really bad reflex of when I see like hot glue dripping or leaking, I put my finger on it. Because <laughs> so, I'm just like, oh, just stop it with my finger. No. Whoop. <laughs> Not with your actual finger. No. Pena, no. no. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, that is a reflex that I have. Good to know. I'll yeah. keep the hot glue guns away Thank from you. you. Unless you have your thimble on. <laughs> no, I use mostly low temp ones now because I don't want Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, awesome. So <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that, that was pretty good. That was fun. Uh, um, so yeah, once again, if you have a story to share with us, you can send it to us at our email, which is cosplaystitchandseam at gmail dot com, or or go to cosplaystitchandseam dot com and uh, fill out the contact form, and it'll send it right to us <laughs> like that yeah like that sound effects oh i spit a little <laughs> gross panic have to clean these I microphones ex- afterwards oh. <sighs> no i think it went over by mercedes <laughs> <laughs> thanks you're thanks. welcome <sighs> well it helps because like we're we're actually recording and looking straight at each other so i haven't been like dodging around my mic sorry david <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> having to look at other people. Yes, because I can actually look at people when I'm talking to them. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you both. Um, so speaking of our amazing editing, would you like to tell us about what you've got coming up? Yes. Um, so David Jeffress, cosplay such and seam editor and guy behind the chair. Yay! Best guy, guy in the chair. the chair. Um, I've also got my Dungeons and Chill. We are back up and running. We are doing our our every other week episodes now. Yay. The main story continues. It is has been fantastic uh, to get all the love and accolades uh, from that being back on the air. Um, Comic <laughs> Trades Monthly. We uh, last month we did Birds of Prey in time mm. with a, a Harley Quinn movie that came out. Ooh, I have to listen to that. No, don't. Oh, don't. Oh no. I mean. Do for sure help my download numbers, but don't because it is it it's gross. It was so gross that I I went to my wife and I said, "Hey, babe, can you just get a bunch of awesome, strong fem people and have them read this really fantastic feminist literature called? Can I can yeah, I say yeah, the yeah, title? Yeah. Okay, uh, Bitch Planet." Ooh. By Kelly Sue DeConnick. It's really good. And Kaylin then reached out to our fantabulous Pannon and a few <laughs> other people locally and said, hey, what are your feelings about this? So if you want to hear Pannon come March, uh, I'm not sure when this episode will be airing, but uh, come March uh, for National Women's Month, we are doing our episode uh, with with Pannon, my wife, and a few other fantastic people. So please Yay, check it out. Awesome. Yeah, and my voice is like super cracky the whole time. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> It was fun. It was a really good read. Oh, like, that sounds I, amazing. But you can get my full opinions on it if you yes. listen to the episode. Da, da, da. It, 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 it does have adult language. I mean, the title should tell you yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. For sure. I think I should get on that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if, you want to, if you want to submit a read, I'd be more than happy to have you on Ooh. Mercedes. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll so talk off mic. So there's these Legend of Zelda comics. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and thank you to Macy Roberts for our amazing music. Yeah, and... She's always super sweet. Yeah, I usually have a pun at the end, but like this year, I actually wanted to start with saying like something uplifting and positive. And so my theme this year is be the positive change you want to see in your community. So that is kind of what i'm like taking with me throughout this year so so if if you're upset that like your cosplay community is toxic or dramatic be the positive change be a role model be awesome we yes. love you don't be the drama be the positive change i love that yeah um so yeah take care we love you guys thanks for listening kisses bye <laughs>